Yeah. What's up, boy? It's your boy, Mike Muse. Welcome to the conversation of Mike Muse Show. I am so excited you are here with me. I am blessing for those of you who are in your car. <laughs> you're listening to us at work. You're at, you're at home, maybe cleaning up right now. He I have no is idea. Red but, as a beat. <laughs> but when you look at this on, on YouTube, you will see me smiling because <laughs> I am such a fan of this young lady. Uh, she has been part of so many great cultural movements for me and audience. You know I love film. You know I love TV. You know I love deconstructing and pulling all the layers back. But there's one film I'm going to talk to her about that to this day we go. I reference in every op-ed I write uh, and every social commentary that I do. She doesn't even need much of an introduction. I mean, she is this Tisha Campbell. What Hi. is happening? How I am so you? excited to have you today. Thank you. You I'm look excited. amazing. Oh, thank you. I and your smile it. seems authentic. Sometimes it is. No, I'm yeah. just joking. <laughs> you can tell there's some joy going on with there's you. There's a lot of joy What's going on. What's bringing you right this joy now. right now through this smile? Understanding myself. Mm. Like like Somewhere. really living with myself, mm -hmm. doing for myself, mm -hmm. and understanding everybody else will fall into place. Mm. You know? Do you feel like this is the first time you're getting to meet yourself? Uh huh. Well, what is it like meeting Tisha? Um, I really like her. She's smarter than I ever thought she was. She's mm -hmm. really intelligent. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's the, the, the brightest and most exciting part of discovery for me. Like the newness that this is and not un the unapologetic um, just joy mm -hmm. that I feel in getting to know every single part of me, the good, the bad, the ugly. Like, you know, I'm 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 happy for the very first time, like truly, truly, truly happy. That's amazing. You are still curious about yourself. Yeah. Uh, that means that you're still living. Uh, most people cannot be self-aware enough yeah. to even want to be curious yeah. or they may not want to even uncover. Well, I just think, I, I think that, you know, That's I rare, was, Tisha. well, I was used to living for other people all the time since I was a little kid, mm -hmm. you know, everything was for everybody else. You know, I'm the, you know, the ultimate empath, mm -hmm. but, Same um, yeah, mm -hmm. like, I it, like you talked about energy mm -hmm. like feeling energy but what I used to make the mistake of is feeling like if I felt a negative energy I would try to change it you know you can't always change other people's energy you have to understand discernment and protecting yourself from bad energy you know what I mean I would do this I wonder are you the same now that we're talking like this mm -hmm. I, I how, so I have to be the adult in the room, yeah. right? And like, I have the ability, I can't yes. control your energy, yes. but I can control my reaction yeah. to your energy yeah. in order to either keep the peace or, 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 or create boundaries, create, create boundaries. And I think it, 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 when people are self-aware and they can do that, the outcomes and experiences that people can have, they can be in control of that, I believe. Boundaries. Are, is mental wellness mm -hmm. at its finest. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be happy with your boundaries. No. There are a lot of people that don't like the fact that I may have maybe isolated myself to only a small group of friends now. Um, that I don't give the way that I used to give of myself. That's okay. It's not being selfish. It's being self full. It's making sure that you have boundaries set in place so that you're not overextending yourself to everybody all the damn time. And it's just incredible to like, for the first time in my, my life, I'm actually giving to me first. You know, because I wanted to be the ultimate wife or the ultimate mother or the yeah. ultimate, you know, co co-worker. I, uh, and I would sacrifice my own energy, self-love, everything yeah. to make other people more comfortable. See, I'm just meeting your audience. I'm just meeting teacher for the first time and it feels like I'm actually talking to myself. Oh, um, that's really interesting. It, no, it is. Just because I don't know what I'm going through right now, but I'm discovering myself as well. Yeah. Um, I was an individual when I come in, I'm the life of the party. Right. Like right, I set the tone. I set yeah. the mood. Okay. I always say people expect me to hit a grand slam every time I step up to the plate. And yeah. that's exhausting. It can be. Mm -hmm. But now I know that, you know, that's just my personality. Mm -hmm. There's and I may not be able to make adjustments in the moment. So there are going to be times where you just stay at home. Yeah. 
yeah, that's very true. Uh, and I gotta just stay stay put. I, I did something for me for the first time. I travel a lot, like yourself, mm -hmm. and normally I'm on the first flight out. Um, so I had to go to a wedding uh, a couple weekends ago. It was mm -hmm. in Virginia, mm -hmm. and it was these beautiful vineyards that were there. But they oversubscribed us at the wedding, so we were very busy with activities. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna book the last flight out on Sunday, so nice. I can go and enjoy the vineyard. Dope. Just by myself, that's right? Dope. But I had never have done that before. Yeah. And so now I'm choosing me yeah. for the first time when it comes to that's that. That's dope. But that's you, dope. with this being said, you're acting. You've been acting since 12. No. Right? No, you did Broadway since at the age of 12. You were yes. acting before 12. I was I started singing at three and acting at seven. Jesus Christ. I didn't know the three. Yes, I've been in this business for 47 years. Woo! No more than that. <laughs> Somebody do the math. <laughs> no, more than that. 40. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing this for 50 years. Whoa. So first of all, congrats. <laughs> that I moment hits you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said in an earlier interview that I, you've been in the business for four decades. I was yeah. like, yeah, four plus. No, no. bitch. 50. <laughs> we got to do another decade. Holy Yo, crap. audience, the room right now is like having a moment. Yo. But see, that is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> In the moment, you're learning about yourself in the moment. Holy you're learning. Crap. You're learning about your career right now in the moment. Oh that, my yeah, god! <laughs> that needed a moment. Yes, that, that, my eyes are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that needed a moment, and that's a moment of celebration, Ooh. Disha. It is to be in this business for 50 years. Five zero. And to start off at in three and in five, it is so hard to transition from a child actor, a child entertainer, yeah. into an adult entertainer yes. and actor. I Cheers think, to think, you. Thank you. Wow. I, I think people need to understand the true career lifespan of an actor is at the most five years yeah but at the most at the most it's usually five years now if you think about it in terms of a football player's career maybe two to three years yeah or a musician might get a sophomore mm -hmm. song because mm -hmm. they don't do albums no more <laughs> you might get one one extra song so it's 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 really um a a testament to how, my, the grind that you have to do in order to stay relevant. Yeah. But whoa, that just that hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Let's go to another subject. <laughs> but, oh. I know this city, but I want to celebrate that, oh, and I want you. to celebrate you for that. Woo. And not only is it an uh, actor career five years, but also too, you are are the lead. You are the, of the films, right? To be in that position up front is hard to maintain in this day and age. And you are here, Thank and you. you are doing it. Thank you. So I want to. I know you say you want to flip. So I want to flip to school days. Uh, that I knew you was going to say that. Did look, you? <laughs> I want you to see. Th that's Nick over there. Yeah. Nick does my hair. Okay. Yeah. Nick is the ultimate school days like he knows everything about school days yeah. went to the HBCU everything All that. yes Nick is smiling too smiling this is Brian yeah, with yes. a great smile uh, but I mean I don't, I don't want to do a discord no, I can do a whole discord and ladies and gentlemen Tisha is here to talk about her new show on Netflix Uncoupled so we are going to get to that okay that's no but problem but this is my first time school days is my favorite because Spike Lee is one of my favorite directors of all time. Yes. And I believe Spike has made these incredible films that are timeless. And the subject matters are timeless. And I feel like, fortunately, unfortunately, we're still talking about some of the issues uh, that came up in school days, all the way from that Popeye scene, that was a KFC, uh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the yeah, parking yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. And there's like, you college kids from me, and think you're better than everybody, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. that goes to classes that exist. I was guilty of that. I went to the University of Michigan. Classism, yeah. And we would call the, stu the, the residents of Ypsilanti when they came to our parties, the Ipsy Lokes are here, right? right? And so, and I felt bad for that, you know, at my mm -hmm. age, but you're young, right? You don't understand the dynamic of that. But I'm right. like, yo, this really what school days was. Mm -hmm. Did you know you were making such, you guys, you all were making such a pivotal film that was discussing all these constructs? I, I, to were a certain extent, yes. Okay. Yes, to a certain extent, yes, because this was uh, Spike Lee's second big film. Um, it was she's got to have it and then mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to be a part of it I don't care if I was an extra okay <laughs> it was Spike Lee right yeah. um, and so when you're amongst all these you know actors and I was I was the youngest uh, cast member whoa I didn't know that yeah I was 18 wow I was the youngest cast member casted in the lead 
I didn't know that it was, I thought it was already casted. Yeah. Honestly. But, um, you know, I, I, I went into that audition not knowing. And then having all these interesting moments in the film, like I remember um, Branford Marsalis and I were making this joke. It was during, the, right before the fight scene. Yes. That fight scene was actually kind of real. Oh, no way. Yeah, because me and Branford was were just talking and, you know, talking smack, like, yeah. as in the scene. But, you know, he did something to my head and he pushed me upside my head. And then everybody started fighting. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it was a it was just a joke, guys. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was really confused. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just some so much talent that was there. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to do my best and yeah. do my part. Did you guys talk about like the colorism that was existing yeah. in the film? Did you guys talk about talk it even about off? It. No, did you guys talk about it off film? Like Child, when you guys weren't shooting? Stop. Yes. So Spike put all the light skinned girls in one hotel. What? A nicer hotel. He put the dark skinned girls in a motel. What? Then he put all the boys, not just, you know, both factions. He put all the boys in a light skinned hotel with I mean in a light skinned girls hotel. I was always what? at the motel with everybody else. Yes. I wanted to go there. I I hung out with them. But it was to create real method chaos. Yes. Right? That was a social experiment. It was a itself. social absolutely to create the the true tension. Mm-hmm. And it worked. But I think after that moment of the the fight scene, I was like, yeah, method acting yeah. cool, but I got to turn the light off. Yeah. Like I work, I turn the light on. I don't work, I turn the light off. Yeah. This I can't do this. I'm going over to everybody else's motel yeah. and hang out with them because everybody took me in as if I was, you know, I was the youngest. I was the little girl in 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 the um, screenplay. Yeah, so. that had to create so much tension it like, did. on the set it did. and the dynamic of that. Did you guys talk? Did he? I talk didn't like it, it because yeah. me and Kime, who was the other lead, yeah, the lead girl. We were there two weeks before everybody else got there, and we were in the same hotel. And when he was moving her, we were crying like, ah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. we were crying because we bonded. We was like, I don't understand why he's doing this to us. Yeah. We didn't. We did not get but, it. But you guys captured it so well. So that's really interesting to learn about that social experiment. Captured it. Yeah. It was it. It, it. it was it. It was. Yes, it was a thing. It was real. It was for me, and I think the reason I always remember to school days is because colorism was different for me growing up. Right. And so my my mother is your complexion. My mm-hmm. sister is a hue darker than you. Mm-hmm. I have another sister who is my complexion. Mm-hmm. My my dad is a little bit lighter than me. Mm-hmm. And then my brother is darker than me. And so we had That's this rainbow. So yeah. Right? And so there really wasn't a distinction. We never talked about light skin, dark skin, brown skin. Y'all didn't. And, no, we didn't. So it never existed in my house. Interesting. Um, and in my city, I went to Lansing, Michigan. It's, it's a very unique time. We used to go and uh, discourse on that one. But we didn't really do the light skin dark skin it wasn't until i got to college where things were noted by color distinction and that was because uh, michigan recruited a lot of kids from detroit and so of all the black kids the majority were there came from detroit and so detroit being majority black city they did a lot of distinctions on color right Mm -hmm. light skin mike dark skin mike you know light skin keisha dark skin keisha and so there was so much color notions around that and then that's when i woke up to colorism i was like oh my god this is school days i'm living in right now it's true and it's real there is a thing of light skin privilege there Mm -hmm. is it is very real right that people have had to deal with we are just now celebrating melanin we are just now coming into understanding how beautiful black truly is yes you know our own people yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I grew up in an era where it was, you know, it's bad. And I, I remember doing plays with uh, my Caucasian counterparts mm-hmm. and somebody saying, oh, T- Tisha thinks she's so hot, but just look at the color of her skin. You know, so I had I had I had both. Yeah. Inside and outside of it. You know yeah. what I mean? I remember taking concealer and drawing my lips smaller to make my lips not protrude and look, I was made to feel bad about 
my skin complexion wow. even outside of you know the black community the black yeah. community yeah. you know because i'm in a world like i'm navigating between two worlds i'm from north new jersey and then i have i go to new york and i'm doing musicals and plays and and you know trying to feed my mm-hmm. family and these little girls are making this other little girl feel bad for the way that i look yeah for your black features for my right. my black features mm-hmm. now it's interesting in my family the firstborn lacks melanin and then we progressively get darker as the as the kids oh. come along it's very interesting <laughs> yeah. like i'm first born so i didn't get it <laughs> and then all my brothers get pro- progressively darker wow yeah You're it's like- just the same thing and all my cousins same thing like it's the, it's the funniest thing so our family portraits could be very similar if we were Probably, to put yeah, our family portraits yeah, up the yeah. same thing that's yeah. very interesting in the sense of the world and what beauty standards have been um mm-hmm. particularly when it comes like, to black women and so mm-hmm. here you're in this white space within the acting and, and now and they're then, pumping their lips up to it, look like mine can you imagine I, no, not. I like mean, it's when, just, I I couldn't have told little Tisha this uh, in a million years. So I understand now when you say joy, and I understand when you smile, mm-hmm. and then I understand now about discovering yourself. Yeah, uh, celebrating uh, myself, th- celebrating yourself, and loving on yourself because mm-hmm. there were so many people who made you feel you had to love and look a certain kind mm-hmm, of way. And mm-hmm. so, cheers to you for finding that journey, Thank you. right? And being curious about yourself and yeah. being surrounded by such great energy, folks. She has a whole crowd in here. No. Uh, that sits around it in a, in a good way. People. No, no, there's such a good love in the room. Yeah, <laughs> my uh, three, my three people, yeah. they they they're high in good energy. So. That that is so good. So I have to talk about uncoupled. This is why I let you yes, here, please. and I can't keep you too long. That means you have to come back. I would love to talk more further with you Absolutely. about some incredible issues. Uncoupled is a story about love uh, and loss. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and, a, it's an amazing story about love and loss, mm-hmm. and but it's still a very funny. I mean, you know, we got Neil Patrick Harris, myself, Emerson Brooks. uh, We have Brooks Ashmankis, you know, Marsha Gay Harden, these amazing, accomplished, award winning, award nominated actors, you know, Mm -hmm. that surround me. And for the first time, you know, I was a part of something so incredibly special. It's it's about a man. Neil Patrick Harris plays uh, a guy who's been in a 17 year relationship. And he's of a certain age, and out of nowhere, they split. He's his 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 uh, boyfriend leaves him, mm-hmm. and so I play his best friend Suzanne, um, who's also his coworker, very accomplished. Uh, what I love is that almost everybody is represented in here, and you know, I'm I'm a a, a real estate mogul. Mm-hmm. You know, we're partners at the real estate company. It's sort of like you know, million dollar listing yep. type of thing, and and then there's the other character, which is new york city itself it just makes new york you god you want to live there the way that he D- darren star who created sex in the city created this show along with jeffrey richmond who was from modern family producer um and they have a way of of making the city look like its own character and sexy and fun and and so you know this is a grown-up show and it's, you know, I know people are used to seeing me in family thing, but this, <laughs> what I'm hoping is that it has the same effect that a show and an iconic show like Pose had, mm-hmm. where you put a human element on it. It doesn't matter who is in love and lost. It really is relatable because I too am uncoupled and I understood the ups and the downs that Michael's, um, Neil Patrick Harris's character Michael was going through mm-hmm. because I too went through that beautiful gorgeous devastation yeah you know so i'm hoping people will you know support it watch it it's funny it's heartfelt you know and it's uncoupled yeah. you know people can relate to heartbreak yeah come on in and watch the show Tisa, you are a true thespian you sold the shit out of that show <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. i've never that had girl, that media. what do you what do they call it media training media training media tra- yo i media training for the first time in my life are you serious yes netflix got me together honey no, you don't understand like i you know, no, honestly, people like, think i've had media training all my life i've never I, had it i am shooketh about <laughs> that right now yo homie i'm like she, that's my first time in my mind i'm like she is selling the I shit, shit out of the you show you better tell your bosses i, I sold the shit y- out of yo like, i was like i don't come even come on netflix i'm like there's no follow-up question nope, i was because nope, i've seen the, I, I 
I've seen got the you. episodes. I was going to do all the things, but nope. that was literally. I said everything that you said. Nothing to freaking say. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, you better tell them I did a great job. Yo, <laughs> this is going number one on GP because you just sold that. Wow. Okay. No, you know what? I Did live it? in New York and I want to move back to the city. I already live in. Right. I'm down the street. I'm like, damn, New York is beautiful. Yeah, wow. New York is so And I'm tea. paying hella rent right now. Oh, yeah. I'm I like, got yeah, it you. Is, it is beautiful. Yes, it's a character. <laughs> I want to move here myself. Let's, you had me. I haven't even seen the show already. Listen, I, it's a great show. But I, I've seen a couple thank episodes. You, it's you amazing. Like it? You're it's incredible. Really fun. No, no, it's fun. It's funny, and it's, the point I want to make that you make was so good that although this is the lead character is a gay character, mm -hmm. it is a universal love Subject, story, yes. and I love when art can be done so well that it's universal. Yes, uh, I always that you can learn something from it, but it's so entertaining. It's so entertaining. It's so entertaining. No matter if you're straight, gay, other, whatever and, you shoes i did it i you love can, my character yo you were a fool in that i know, a I was. great you know what i mean yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you did yeah. your thing in this in this show right here i'm so it's excited fun. for you Tisha. i'm so glad you chose this role thank you i can't even wait to see what's next up I, I just yeah I, you gotta watch the whole the, you gotta stream the whole entire binge watch because yeah. it's really really good Tisha campbell you've been an amazing guest thank like you. i have to say that i don't thank admit you. that on there because some guests are not amazing oh shoot. um but you uh, <laughs> amina knows that she's been with me for a while so it's damien like you've been an amazing guest <laughs> Guess. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and thank, thank you, you for going on the journey with me. Oh my gosh. And for Listen, being so open. I'm a damn open book. I can't say <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tip. You hear me? <laughs> and if you ask the right questions, yeah. you can get it all out of me. So you did a great job. Thank yourself. you so yeah. much, Tisha. See Let that media training yeah, work. You uh, see what uh, I did? You I flipped, flipped it back on his ass. <laughs> I was like, whoa, look at this. Who is doing the interview now? <laughs> she what? said, you are so good. This is right. Netflix over here. Oh. You are so good. <laughs> like, good. Like, take her everywhere. Like, seriously. If you need to sell the show, oh. Tisha Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want your movie to go number one in the box office, book Tisha you Campbell. tell if me you, what to say. If I you want your you. song to go number one on the billboard, she's going to look. Baby, I got yeah. you. <laughs> she needs to market it. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch Tisha Campbell on Netflix. It's streaming right now, Uncoupled. You're going to enjoy yourself. Uh, uh, Tisha Campbell, thank you so much. Thank you. Best luck to everything. Appreciate Until you. Until next time, folks. Peace.